you're not tripping, the wing is actually moving. So when you look at a Ferrari road car and then a Ferrari race car, there aren't that many differences anymore. Power is similar, suspension setups are similar, and so are the brakes. But the main difference is aero, or well, it used to be. Properly clever active aerodynamics have slowly been appearing on modern supercars, and this Zenvo is the maddest of them all. Enzo Ferrari once said, aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines, and that didn't age too well. Aerodynamics have been shaping the way cars look, making them faster and actually more economical. And as technology has moved on, car makers have tried many clever ways to improve aerodynamics. One of the most popular, particularly in modern supercars, is active aero. This enables a car's aerodynamics to change while it's moving. And by the way, folding the mirrors in on your Fiesta doesn't count. So to give you an example, a fixed rear wing can give you an improvement in downforce, pushing down on those rear wheels and increasing grip. Unfortunately, it also increases drag, making it harder for a car to move through the air at higher speeds and reducing its overall top speed. So the aerodynamics need to figure out something that can change dynamically, allowing them to have their cake and eat it too. And the McLaren P1 is a great example of this. Not only can it hunker down closer to the ground, but the rear wing can change in height and and angle depending on the speed or the mode it's in. And that wing also has an F1 inspired DRS feature, reducing the angle of the wing to zero degrees, reducing the drag by 23%. Imagine having that button available, you smash that on the motorway. <laughs> However, Active Aero doesn't just mean having a huge moving rear wing. Some lie a little further under the skin. Some cars may need to look a certain way. So a big garish spoiler can kind of ruin the lines a bit and making a car look too purposeful. So the Ferrari 812 is one of those cars that uses active aero in a more subtle way. So it has this flap integrated into the rear diffuser that can open up to 17 degrees in order to reduce drag at high speed, letting the air slip more cleanly out the back. So it kind of stalls the diffuser, giving you more top speed. It's really, really clever. So you'd expect this kind of tech from companies like Ferrari, Pagani, Bugatti, McLaren, but what about a little Danish company with only 30 employees? And you may have heard of Zenvo, the mad car maker making a thousand brake horsepower rocket ships for the road. But if you haven't, it's time for a brief history lesson. They're not just some flyby new boy on the block. They've been making cars for 12 years now. And what makes Zenvo particularly special is the fact that all of its cars are built in house. That includes the engine, the gearbox, the carbon fiber, the paint, the interior, and much more. And whilst the engine did start out its life as a General Motors V8, they changed quite a lot. So we'll sweep that under the carpet. Its first car, the ST1, was released in 2009, and it didn't have a particularly successful debut. Driven by Jeremy Clarkson on Top Gear, it broke down twice. And you might recognize this photo. Firstly, the clutch failed, and then it set fire due to a faulty cooling fan. And we've seen way too many manufacturers come under the crushing criticism of Clarkson, and Zenvo's first try received it in full force. But despite the bad press, Zenvo kept at it. The track-only TSR was launched in 2016 at the Geneva Motor Show, sporting a huge fixed rear wing, as well as a large front splitter and rear diffuser. And it was this car that gave Zenvo an idea. Why don't we build this one, but for the road? And that's how the TSR S was born. And as you can see, it looks pretty similar to its track-only brother, but there's one quite big difference, and it's the huge movable rear wing. And take a look at this. You're not tripping, the wing is actually moving. I don't know what Zenvo was drinking when they designed it, but we'd like some too. It's what Zenvo calls an active multi-axis centripetal rear wing. And it may sound like something you find on a Typhoon fighter jet, but it's designed to tilt forward and act as an air brake, but also tilt left and right in order to shift downforce to the inner rear wheel when cornering. So let me explain. When a car turns left, the weight of the car naturally wants to shift right. Right, we know that. This reduces the load on that inner rear wheel, and there's less force on that inner rear tire leaving you with less grip. But what this clever rear wing does is attempt to shift the downforce by working like a counterbalance, increasing the downforce on one corner rather than across the entire rear. One side of the wing lifts into the airstream whilst the other dips out of the way, a bit like a really expensive seesaw. And in that sense, it works in a similar way to an anti-roll bar by trying to shift the load away from the outer side of the car when cornering. And it's a really clever idea, but does it actually work? Well, you can see why Zenvo tried to improve traction on grip for the TSRS, seeing as this thing sends almost 1200 horsepower to the rear wheels. And in testing, they found there were definite improvements to be had by having this great big tilting wing. Unfortunately, there's no real data for us to base a solid opinion on. But there's no doubt this could have a great impact on grip, 
but there's one potential flaw in the logic. Increasing the load on that inner rear wheel when cornering will give it more grip, but how does it affect the front end? Imagine standing at the back of a longboard skateboard, and when trying to turn, all the weight would be on the rear and not on the front and it probably wouldn't work that well. What it does is reduce load from the outer front wheel, the one that's needed to make the car change direction. And this is because a lot of the weight transfer in cars tends to happen diagonally, especially when cornering. And that means that whatever is happening at one corner of the car will have the opposite effect at the other end. And so the Zenvo's rear wing could just increase the likelihood of understeer, and no one wants that. And of course, the rear wing isn't the TSIS's only piece of aero. It also has a pretty hefty front diffuser, but it can't adjust that with the rear wing. So it does make you think, if it's such a good idea, why have none of the other performance cars had a go? You'd think they'd at least try it. Well, Pagani and Lamborghini sort of have, albeit not quite in the same way as the Zenvo did. You might have seen the active flaps at the rear of the Pagani Huayra. They're designed to work in a similar way by independently raising and lowering in order to shift load onto those inner wheels. There's also a pair at the front of the car designed to work as a kind of air brake. But one thing to note is that the faster, more track orientated Huayra BC added a more conventional fixed rear wing and make of that what you will. Lamborghini uses what it calls aero vectoring, which again is essentially designed to distribute aerodynamic force when cornering in its more extreme models like the Huracan Performante and the Aventador SVJ. These two flaps either side of the fixed rear wing will open in order to allow air to pass through the inside of the wing and out underneath, disrupting the clean airflow above the wing and reducing the drag. And when the flaps are closed, the wing is utilized in a normal way in order to create downforce. They can also close independently of one another in order to shift downforce to either side of the wing, depending on which way the car's turning. So Zenvo aren't the only ones doing it, but they're definitely doing it in a different way. And we're giving the Crazy Danes the world's maddest wing award if there's such a thing. If there isn't, we should, we should definitely make one. And one thing's for certain, the TSRS's wing definitely makes it unique and gets people talking about a relatively unknown car manufacturer, and maybe that's part of why they did it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. You should check out this other video we think you'll love, and I'll catch you in the next one.